Alright, so nagbabalik tayo sa ating violin tips and tricks. And for today's video, let's talk about effectively speeding up your pieces. No? So, kung paano tayo dapat magpabilis when we start to practice uh, fast pieces, fast passages, how to effectively start practicing them, and kung ano pa yung mga pwede nating ibigay na tips on how to actually play it properly. No. So, a lot of people kasi tend to think na kapag yung isang piece eh mabilis, mahirap na agad. No? Speed is part of the difficulties, pero it doesn't have to be difficult just because it's fast. No? Marami kang pwedeng gawin para mapadali yun. And one thing is to practice it slower. Yan. Diba? Sabi nga nila, if you can play it slowly, you can play it quickly. No? It's not 100% incorrect or inaccurate kasi nakatulong talaga yung slow practice. Ang problema is how you can translate things you learned slow and make them faster. And that is yun yung pag-uusapan natin. Yan. Kasi ang isa sa pinakamalaki or one of the biggest uh, concerns that I have with my students as well no, is when they practice slow, they only practice slow the things that they don't know and then they speed up on the passages that they might know no so ito malaking problem to kasi yun ta, uh, we're not really designed to do those things no kaya kailangan pinag-aaralan kung paano natin matatranslate yung mga ginagawa natin no kasi pag madali we breeze past through it pero pag mahirap ay na nagkakaroon na ng struggle so hindi dapat ganun no especially when you when you are starting to play no so Let's use ano, a simple example, yung gavot na lang sa Suzuki sa book 1. Diba? So, so, yung mga part na yan, kaya-kaya. No? <laughs> Tapos, pagdadating na dun sa... Bilang... So, biglang ano, <laughs> biglang babagal. So, ganun yung karami, karaniwang nangyayari. And how can you move past that is by actually scaling things down. No? Hindi pwedeng, alam mo na yung part na to, eh, matutugtog mo na rin yung part na yun, no So, when you practice slow, slow it down na sama-sama. So, if you can only play the 16th at... So, ibig sabihin, tugtugin mo yung buong passage na yun na... Para matugtog mo ng bang... Diba? So, yung mga ganun. So, paano mo siya pa-practicein? So, importante kasi is what we call this scaling, no? Parang isipin mo na lang ganito. Meron kang model na toy, toy model. For example of a car. If you have that. No. So, lahat 'yon, 'di ba, nakikita natin sa ano, sa kanilang mga packaging. 1 of 32. 1 is to 32 scale. So, if you it's scaled down 32 times yung mismong model, no. So, isipin mo ganun. Tapos yung gulong niya hindi sukat pang mas malaking model. Eh di syempre, paano tignan? Ganun din yung nangyayari. If you can't scale your playing down to its exact proportions in terms of the speed, hindi mo siya matutugtog the right way when you scale it up kung bibilisan mo. No? So, proper scaling is important. And how you can do this effectively is by using a metronome. Kasi pag ginamit mo yung metronome, hindi nagbabago yung beats ng metronome. Diba? So, if you have it set at 60, sabi na 60, lahat ng tutugtugit mo, ganun mo siya, nakascale siya doon. No? And if you wanna go faster, edi you set it at a higher tempo. Let's say, 120 na. Kasi mabilis na. So, so if we do that, mas madali nating ma-scale yung sarili nating mga pieces. Let's try that out. So I have my metronome ready. And let's try to play yun pasahe na yan, no? Nang gavot. Using that type of scale. 
No, when we say scaling nga, so let's do 60. For example, let's do 60. So ganito mo siya pa-practice. So dapat yung madadaling part ganyan din yung speed niya, di ba? So Diba? So, sa 60, nakukuha mo na siya na gano'n yung may tatakbo mo pa kaya. And then, the thing is, you don't speed up in increments. So, hindi pwedeng 60. Natugtug mo yun. Let's focus on that passage, no? So, natugtug mo siya ng 60. Itatry mo ng 61, no? Konting-konti yung increment, pero... It's actually messing up your head kung bakit. Kasi sobrang liit lang nung difference. Na hindi siya nagiging equal dun sa paggalaw. No? I would actually suggest at least an increment of 10 or 5 kung hindi pa talaga kaya. So from 60, go to 70. And then after 70... Go to 80. Yan. So, na nararamdaman mo sa sarili mo yung pagbilis, di ba? Nararamdaman mo yung pagkakaroon ng increments. Aside from 7, 60, 61, 62. Napakarami mong pagdadaanan, but the repetition is not really going to help you out ng super dami. Yung hindi siya ganun kalaki yung makukuha mong experience dahil ang liliit ng increments. You, sh you should set your increments equally, ba? Hindi pwedeng by ones lagi. So, ayun nga, if medyo mabagal mo siya in start, you can use increments of 10. Ngayon, pag hindi mo tamaan sa 10s, tsaka ka magbaba to 5. And then, pag 5, hindi pa rin 2. Ayun. So, 2, 5, and 10. That's what I personally do, no? Kasi yung 1, masyado ng maliliit yung increments na yun. Especially if hindi naman ganun kabibilis yung passages na tinutugtog mo. Siyempre, pag mababilis, siyempre, yun, 2 pwede. Pero yung 1, hindi talaga magiging ano. Depende na lang din sa piece na tutugtog eh. And then, aside from those increments, make sure na yung buong piece kaya mo matugtog with setting those increments up. No? Hindi lang yung isang part. So, Sabihin na natin kaya mo siyang tugtugin. So, you, you just focus on one part. Pero, isi-set mo yung maximum niya. For example, for this, 80. Diba? Sabihin natin, yun na yung target mong tempo. So, dapat pag natugtug mo yung buo, Pwedeng... Bigla ako magsistruggle sa ganun, no? So, hindi nagiging effective yung practice mo. Yun nga. Kasi scaling is pretty important if you're trying to achieve a certain goal in terms of tempo, no? And when you're doing this, what's happening is actually your reaction time is getting quicker. Yun yung mahalaga dun eh. Kaya tayo nagpa-practice to scale it down, slow it down, is para yung isip mo is always prepared to do those things, di ba? Kasi your mind can work better at slower rates. Pero kailangan yung focus nandun. So, every time you practice slow and then even though you're practicing slow, your mind should be as quick as it can. No? And then when you go fast, parang ano na lang siya, normal na gawain na lang. Nakaka-react agad yung isip mo sa mga ginagawa mo. And that's the thing also is you have to understand that in instrument playing, you're not just training your muscles but you're training your mind most of the time. Kasi yung isip natin dapat yung nagpapagalaw. No? We don't want to rely on the movements of our body na parang natural movements lang nila, no? what we call muscle memory. 
we must always rely on the reaction of our minds. Kasi kapag nag-rely tayo sa galaw lang ng kamay natin, maraming tendencies na pwede tayong madapa, pwede tayong hindi umusad agad, no? So we have to always be mindful of what we are doing with our instrument. And I'll end this video here. Maraming salamat sa lahat na sumusuporta sa ating violin tips and tricks. If you like this video, comment down below kung ano pa yung gusto nyo yung pag-usapan natin. Like this video, share this with all your friends. And also, check out my other content here on my YouTube channel. Also, check out my socials. Links down in the description box below. Follow me on Spotify. Again, my course on Udemy is still on sale. Check it out. Links, All links you need are down in the description box below. And I'll see you on the next video.